Hello everybody, my name's Toby Picard and this is my Camera Trap tutorial video. I've been using a Camera Trap system for over two years now, so I'm hoping that I can use my skills that I've picked up in this time to teach you guys how to use one of these to be able to get your own wildlife photography images out in the field. Now, you may be asking why you should be bothered about getting into camera trapping. I would recommend it for three reasons. Firstly, it allows me to leave my camera in one location whilst I can go to another location and take photos at the same time, effectively allowing me to take two photos at once. Secondly, it allows me to photograph more elusive animals such as badgers, foxes and deer, whereby I can get my camera a lot closer to the animals without me being present. And thirdly, it allows you to be far more creative with your photos, particularly in the lighting aspect, and it means you can get some really artistic shots. Overall, and most importantly, it means I can get some sleep because I can leave my camera out overnight and go and collect it in the morning and see what photos I've managed to capture, often of nocturnal animals. Well, before we get into all the technical details, just so you know what I'm talking about, here are some of my favourite camera trapping images that I've captured myself over the last two years. Check these out. Did you like them? Well, if you did and it's inspired you to keep on watching, then let's go have a look at the equipment you will need to be able to get out with your own camera trap. As a minimum, you will need one tripod, your cable for your motion sensor, your DSLR, one motion sensor, here using the Camtraptions PIR motion sensor, some flashes, here using the Nikon SB28s, your wireless flash triggers, and finally some flash snoots. Let's go have a look at them in detail. So, before you start with your camera trap setup, I would recommend buying one of these. This is a Victor trail camera, and I got it on Amazon for about £50. It's a night vision motion sensor camera, and the beauty of these is that they're very easy to use and their batteries last for ages. You can leave it out strapped to a tree or a fence post and it will capture images or videos of any animal that walks through. And the beauty of it is that you can then find out what wildlife is either in your garden or in the nearby fields and woods before you put out your camera trap. So, the most important part of your camera trapping equipment is this, your motion sensor. Now I use the Camtraptions PIR motion sensor version 2 which is undoubtedly one of the best models on the market right now and it cost me about £180. Version 2 is a wired setup and version 3, which is their latest release, is wireless. I wouldn't recommend version 1 because this was very much a testimonial model which they improved upon massively to create this one, the version 2. It's very simple and simply all it has is one cable which plugs straight into the motion sensor and which the other end of it plugs straight into your camera. And it's as simple as that. Any animal that walks past the motion sensor will cause the sensor to detect motion and tell your camera to take a picture. Now the great thing about this is its size. Look how tiny it is. It also has an incredibly good battery life. It uses six AA batteries and it has a standby time of over three months. And in all honesty, in the two years that I've been using it, I've only changed the batteries once. Now that shows it's incredibly useful and incredibly durable and it means you can leave it out for many, many weeks, if not months, out in the field. The second most important part of your camera trap setup is this, your camera. Now, I shoot with the Nikon D3300, which I bought for about £200 on eBay second hand. Because I can't stress to you enough, do not leave your most expensive camera out in the field to do camera trapping, because chances are the elements will get to it or someone could even nick it. So I bought this purely for the camera trapping and it's worked just fine. It's 24 megapixels and I even shoot with the 18 to 55 mm lens because we're going to be shooting with our camera trap at about f8 so the photos are still incredibly sharp. Now, aside from the high quality sensor in this camera, the main reason I bought it was because of the standby. 
That means I can leave it out and the camera will effectively go to sleep, so it will conserve the battery. But if anything walks in front of the motion sensor, it will tell the camera to immediately wake up and fire away and take a picture. What it basically means is that you can leave your camera out for an extended period of time and you know that your sensor and the camera will both last. Also, don't forget your SD card and I shoot with a 16 gb SD card which does just fine and that should give you plenty of space and allow you to take a few hundred images at least. Now, if you talk to any camera trapper, they will tell you that their most prized possession in their camera bag is these, their flashes. And that's because there's only one model of flash that you can use really well with your camera trap. And that is the Nikon SB28. The reason I say that is because they stopped making them in about 2004. So the only way you can get them is on eBay and get them second hand. And that makes them really hard to come by. But don't lose hope. Whether that's trawling through eBay or asking a friend of a friend of a friend, you will get them eventually and it's worth it because these are some of the best flashes that Nikon have ever made and most importantly, they're the best flashes for camera trapping. So, why so sought after, I hear you ask? And the reason is because the Nikon SB28s have the best standby of any flash out there. That means that they can effectively conserve their batteries for many days, if not weeks, without you having to change the batteries. So all in all, your flashes, your camera and your sensor are all looking fairly promising for leaving out in the field for an extended period of time. So what's the catch? Surely you could just leave your camera trap out for weeks and allow it to take photos every day and every night. Hmm. That's it, you've caught me out. But the reason is because then things start to get a little bit complicated. And that's because the flashes are talking to the camera which is being talked to by the motion sensor. So how does that all work? Well, there's two ways of going about this, but each of them have their pros and their cons. A wired setup. So option one is to use a wire to connect your flashes directly to the hot shoe of your camera. But the issue is that the wires themselves are often no longer than about three meters in length. Now that doesn't sound like too much of an issue until you're actually out in the field and you want to start getting a little bit creative with your lighting and you realise that you actually want to put your flashes a lot further away from the camera setup. So that's why I tend not to use a wired setup. But importantly, a wired setup does not require any extra batteries. So you can be confident that you can leave all of this equipment out and it will last until one of them runs out of battery. A wireless setup. So your second option is to use these wireless flash triggers, which simply put, you attach one to the base of one flash, another to the base of your other flash, and then finally, attach your third to the hot shoe mount on your camera. And it's as simple as that. So basically, whenever the camera triggers, it will tell your flashes to also fire. And it means that you can put these flashes up to 100 meters away from the camera, which will allow you to get really creative with your lighting. However, the issue with going wireless is that each trigger requires two AAA batteries and they do not last long. I can leave these out for maybe two nights before I have to change the batteries. So the option there is to either use some higher quality, longer lasting triggers or to get some rechargeable batteries. However, I haven't opted for that yet. If you are looking for triggers, I use the Yongnuo RF603 version 2, which I bought on Amazon for about £25. What I would say though, is that Camtraptions, who make the motion sensor, also make some very high quality triggers, and they're a little bit more expensive, but they have the added bonus of allowing you to plug in an external battery pack, so they will last a lot longer. Overall, however, I find the wireless setup far easier to work with and it allows you to be far more creative with your images. So if you have the option, try and get some really high quality triggers and you'll be just fine. So there we have it guys. The only other equipment I'd recommend you get is a tripod and some camouflage netting. And other than that, you may also want to create a flash snoot, which I only found out about this week. But it's very simple. All you do is you get some black card and some white paper glued to the inside and you roll it up to form a tube which you can slip over the end of your flash. 
but it basically allows you to direct the light from your flash onto a particular point which will allow you to get incredibly creative with your images. Now that's all the equipment out the way, let's go see how it all fits together to form your camera trap. First, take your motion sensor and grab the cable that plugs into the base of the motion sensor. This cable then runs to the other end, which you can then plug straight into the side of your DSLR. Next, we want to grab the flashes. I'll put these either side. Then we need our wireless triggers. One wireless trigger goes to one base of a flash. And do the same on the other. Finally, take your third and final wireless trigger and attach it to the hot shoe mount of your camera. And that's it, simple as that. When the motion sensor tells the camera to take a picture, the wireless trigger will talk to these two wireless triggers and the flashes will go off. Easy. Now you have a firm understanding of the camera trap system, let's go deploy it out in the field. But I can't go like this. Hang on. That's better. Let's go.